Today's read aloud about insects is called Insects Everywhere. What is the smallest animal you have ever seen? Do you know of any small animals that have six legs? For the next several lessons, you will be learning about small six-legged animals called insects. Insects are the largest group of animals on the earth and there are many different types of insects. You will learn about some of the many different types of insects, what characterizes an animal as an insect, the life cycle of insects, and how insects may be helpful and or harmful. Here are some vocabulary words in our read aloud today. The first word is insects. Small animals with six legs and three main body parts. The next word is social. Living together in organized communities. And the last word is solitary. Living alone or in pairs. All of the insects pictured in this domain are shown bigger than life size so you can see them better. Do you recognize any of the insects pictured in this image? Go ahead and share one fact that you know about any of the insects pictured. Insects live in nearly every habitat on Earth. Listen carefully to find out the only places on Earth where insects cannot survive. Let's begin. Hello, boys and girls. I've been invited to join you today to talk about a very important subject, me. Who knows what type of animal I am? Right, I'm a fly. I'll bet most of you have seen lots and lots of flies, haven't you? I'm told that you find us flies rather annoying. So I'm guessing that you've swatted at one of my billions of cousins at least once in your life. I'm wondering just how much you really know about us. For example, did you know that I could walk straight up a wall? I'll bet you can't do that, can you? I have thousands of tiny hairs on my feet that act like suckers. I am a housefly the most common type, but there are many other fly species on Earth. A species is a group of plants or animals that are alike in important ways. Horse flies, robber flies, fruit flies, gnats, and mosquitoes have many different species that all belong to the same group. Scientists group animals into different categories. What different kinds of animals can you name? Yes, fish, Snakes, frogs, birds, and insects are just a few of the animal groups you know. Flies, like me, belong to the largest group of animals on Earth. Who knows which group is the largest? Insects! Insects are small animals with six legs and three main body parts. We flies are insects, and we share the planet with millions of other insects in many different habitats. Habitats are the natural homes of plants and animals. Can you name a few? Great! Deserts, forests, mountains, grasslands, and tundra are some you may know about. During the next few lessons, some of my fellow insect friends are going to teach you lots of interesting facts about insects that live in different kinds of habitats. We insects live all over the globe everywhere except the oceans. Insects even live in some very cold or very hot areas of the earth. We'll start today by looking at meadow grasslands. Look out over this field of alfalfa. Do you see any animals in the picture? It just looks like an ordinary grassy field without much going on, doesn't it? But don't be fooled. This field is teeming with life. If you sat down in the middle of this meadow and closed your eyes, you would likely hear birds singing 
but you might be completely unaware of the often silent, hidden world of insects all around you. Many insects depend on plants to live. Many insects eat plants and some lay their eggs on plants. The plant in which an insect lays its eggs and which provides food for its young acts as host and is called a host plant. Each host plant attracts different types of insects. Many insects would die without their host plants because they have developed very specific diets needed to live. Many meadow plants attract grasshoppers. Grasshoppers feed on the leaves and stems of the alfalfa plant. Harder to find is the tiny leafhopper, but this wedge-shaped insect can slow down the plant's growth, turning it brown as it sucks nutrition from its host plant. Many insects, such as these tiny aphids, can damage entire meadows. Grasshoppers, leafhoppers, and aphids are all pests. Farmers are never happy when they discover them on their plants because they can destroy their crops. But not all insects are pests. Who knows what this insect is called? That's right, it's a ladybug. Did you know that ladybugs are some of the most helpful insects on earth? They feed on aphids and the eggs of moths and beetles that destroy crops. Lacewings and ambush bugs also eat aphids, so farmers are happy when they see these insects on their plants. From grasslands, let's move to a forest habitat. Both cone-bearing evergreens and trees that drop their leaves each year live in this forest. Many, like these pine trees, are host to a variety of bark beetles. These tiny insects can kill huge trees. How can that be possible? Bark beetles burrow, or dig, under the tree's bark, creating a series of tunnels in which they lay their eggs. Well, let's think about this. What does a tree need to live? By burrowing into the layer of wood beneath the bark, these beetles stop the flow of nutrients, or food and water, throughout the tree and often kill the tree. Lots of insect activity takes place overhead in the forest, but many insects also live on the forest floor. Can you think of any? Ants are one of the most common insects on Earth, and many live in the forest. Unlike many of us solitary insects that live on our own, ants are social insects that live in colonies or groups. Let's look at an especially interesting social ant that lives in the rainforest. This is an army ant. Army ants travel in big raiding parties that cooperate to hunt prey. They resemble, or look like, an army of soldiers as they move across the ground together in a large group. These ants are known for swarming their prey all at once, which means that the swarm can attack a lot of prey at the same time. You'll learn more about ants another day, so let's take a quick peek at one more forest insect. This beetle is named for the long, large horn at the front of its head. Does this horn look like that of any other animal that you already know? I'm thinking of a much larger animal. Yes, a rhinoceros. The rhinoceros beetle uses its horn for digging hideouts and finding food along the forest floor. Male rhinoceros beetles use the horn for wrestling with other males in an effort to win over a female beetle. The male that succeeds in throwing the other off a branch gets the female rhinoceros beetle. What kinds of insects do you think live in the coldest habitats? There are many types of flies on the tundra, this very cold habitat, including house flies like me. This arctic crane fly has amazingly long legs. And guess what? Adult crane flies have no mouths, so they never eat. Here's another fact about them that's not too surprising. They only live for a few days. 
Some insects are aquatic, meaning that they live in or near water. Here's one that you may have seen in rivers, ponds, or streams. This insect is a dragonfly. A few minutes ago, however, I told you that there is one large water habitat that does not support the life of insects. Do you remember what that habitat is? The ocean. Let's look at the globe again. Is the earth covered by more land or more water? Right, nearly two thirds of the earth is covered by water and most of that water is in our oceans. Think about it. Oceans are the world's biggest habitat, yet no insects live there. But insects found on only one third of the earth's surface are still the largest group of animals on earth. Flies, grasshoppers, ants, caterpillars, beetles, these are all insects, yet they look quite different from one another. Different shapes, sizes, and colors. So what makes an insect an insect? You'll find out next time. In the meantime, be thinking about how a fly is like a grasshopper, or a beetle is like an ant. Here are some discussion questions. Feel free to pause the video in order to allow time to think and discuss. What is the largest group of animals on Earth? Are there many different types of insects or only a few different types of insects? In what large water habitat are insects unable to survive? Many insects depend upon host plants to stay alive. In what ways do these host plants help the insects? If you were a farmer, which would you rather see on your crops? A ladybug or a grasshopper? Why? You heard in the read aloud that flies are solitary or live on their own. How are ants, which are social insects, different from solitary insects, like a fly? Imagine that there was no water on Earth. Do you think insects would still survive? Why or why not?